Okay, it's 6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And just up, this is an open meeting. Um, from the planning board, we have Joe Zagrodnik, Jim Maximoski, Bill Dwyer, Mike Sarzinski, and hopefully Mark Dunn will join us, but he's not on just yet. And with that, Mr. Dwyer, um, who's for open session? Uh, first up is Keith Terry. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. We have, we have a uh, site plan application, special permit site plan application that was submitted uh, for a dental office construction on 101 East Street in Hadley. Uh, would you like me to share my screen and show the plans? Sure. Okay, hold on. You're, you don't allow, uh, the host isn't allowing screen share at the moment. Okay. At any rate. I can fix that. Oh, all right. All fixed. Well, let's try this again. Okay. So here's the um, Russell Street is to the north of our parcel. East Street is to the east of the parcel. We're on a corner. And um, there is an existing residential home and barn uh, on the property. The remainder is landscape and trees. Um, the intention is to construct a uh, building here in the middle of the site. We're going to enter uh, the site from East Street across from the bank. Uh, on the other corner, uh, we're actually going to have employee parking closer to East Street and the, um, you know, the uh, patrons will, par will park further into the parcel. So we'll have where's, a... where's the post office? Oh, so the post office is on the opposite corner of us. Let me go back to the last. Oh, the post office is on the opposite corner. Oh, OK. OK. Yes. So we have the post office is east of East Street. The bank is east of East Street. And we're on the west. Um, so that that's the uh, intent of the project. Okay. Is there a variance required? It, it seemed like you didn't have, uh, was it the front yard? Yes, they need a variant for the 40 foot setback. Okay. I believe that you've applied for that. As I understand, it's my understanding that um, they sat and and discussed it. I I thought they had a uh, an approval on that, but I have well, maybe to we did. That. I mean, we're we're asking if you applied for a variance. Yeah, I will have to research that. I don't know. I I know that there was discussions with with the zoning board of appeals. Okay. Uh, so, I'm sorry. We we also have uh, submitted this. Uh, we have a peer review in process with tie and bond. Can I just interrupt a second? Um, I was there at the ZBA meeting and Larry Tuttle was there with the proposal and um, it did pass at the ZBA meeting. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. So is the variance from East Street or from Russell Street? East Street, I'm sorry, from Russell Street. You need a variance from all streets. Correct. Yeah, they they met. Yeah. Oh, 99, you're 99 foot. Oh, you're 99 feet back on East Street. Uh, we're 69 feet. Oh, 69. Okay, well, I'm still looking at the 99.2. Okay, okay. you have people from East Street because you're, you're you're more than 50 feet. Okay. Right. Okay. And does this have the the uh, open space that it's required? Yes, we feel we've. Um, provided the open space. Um, 
So we have a site area of 40,900 <clears throat> square feet. The building is 4,873 square feet with a pavement for a total of um, impervious area of 23,091 square feet. So the air, open space provided is 43%. Doesn't seem like that much, but I guess it's all spread out. Okay. Okay, we've got your application. Um, you've given us an abutters list, but you didn't put it on mailing labels. So you need to get us two copies of abutters list on mailing labels. So we, with our submission, the hard copy we dropped off had two sets of envelopes. Where? We dropped off the town offices. And then Where in the town offices? In our I mailbox? Didn't, I didn't do it personally. I, I don't know who received it. Okay. Well, I mean, we need, I, don't, I don't know where they are either. So, I mean, unless you tell us where they are, I'm not going to go searching in the town hall. All you'd need to do is find out where they are and email Mr. Dwyer at planning at hadleyma.gov to let us know where these materials are. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think um, we saw some envelopes in the planning board mailbox, but I could double check tomorrow. Oh, okay. All right. If they're in the mailbox, that's fine. Okay. I just want to know where they are. Right. Well, We've had people drop them, but they, they say they dropped them off and they put them in, they are in a town hall, but people don't always let us get us to the right destination. That's all. Sure. Okay. If they're in it, if they're fine. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that, Kayla. Are there elevations of the proposed building? I I have I do not have elevations. Of, well, hold on. I don't think that I have elevations of the of the as building in, in my. In, yeah, as in how the sides look okay. instead of the. We green. will need them for the hearing. Yeah. Okay. Preferably one color rendering of what it will actually look like from, from Russell Street or basically from the corner of East Street and um, Russell Street looking towards what the building will look like. Yeah, that's great. I, uh, obviously, we'll do that. Absolutely. Otherwise, in the application, I use, who, is, who are you using for a reviewing engineer? Tie and bond. Tie and bond. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, so can we just pin down with Kyle what um, what's going to be a consistently good date for PVPC? Is it going to be the first or the third meeting of the month? I can do either of those. So I would defer to the board if you have a preference. We don't. Do you have a preference? For the rest of the year, which one is open for you? So let's do third. Do third. Okay. Very good. We like decisive. Okay. So that means that we cannot schedule this for public hearing for Aug, uh, August 6th. So we'd have to bounce it to September. Okay. No. First Tuesday in September. Yeah. Day after Labor Day. Okay. Okay. What's the street address of this again? 101 East Street. Thank you. So you're saying that the, the hearing is supposed to be the 2nd of September? 3rd. 3rd. Tuesday, September 3rd. Sorry. Is there a Sidewalk being added by this project or the state on uh, on East Street coming down from the corner? Because I saw that you had what looked like uh, an accessible depressed curb there. 
So the the roadway reconstruction, um, they were under they were in the process of building the sidewalks. Uh, so the sidewalks are constructed along Russell and along East Street to okay. the extent of our frontage. Okay. We will have to, um, you know, dismantle uh, the entrance that they've provided, the existing entrance they've provided, and we'll have to cut in our a new entrance where we where we need it. I don't remember where the curb. Oh yeah, right, because the curb cut is closer to the corner, and you're you're which we prefer moving it further from the intersection. Right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. So the your public hearing will be scheduled for September third at six forty five, and I will. I don't have a filing fee for you yet because typically we get the cost of the legal notice and then we add a little bit to that for the postage and for the various town fees but it'll probably be somewhere around 500 plus or minus dollars yes great the vast majority of that is the legal notice yep okay so you've got your email give it the let's see You have your email, right? Yeah, it's K Terry at Hancock Associates, and I've I've already been, you know, conversing with Mr. Dwyer, Dwyer, uh, so. Yeah, you sure. should have it because I just sent it uh, sent it around last week. Okay. I apologize for being late. I missed the first two minutes or so. Do we know what the existing building is that's being removed? What it's a it? it's a residential home and barn and a barn. Yeah. Okay. And the barn is in the Route Nine right of way. Yeah, uh, the home is in the Route Nine right away. <laughs> it's not the barn. <laughs> well, the extension of the, the L that connects the old house to the barn. Is that Mollick's old house, Henry Mollick? Couldn't I tell know. you. I don't know. Okay. Very good. See you on September 3rd. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Have a great night. Thank you. Uh, next up is Paul Benjamin. Hi. Um, I get, did I get the prize for the longest running project in town yet? Or? <laughs> you're, you're definitely in the run for it. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to, you know, someday I want to get in the Guinness book and this might be it. Okay. Anyway, as you know, um, Acre, formerly called Acrebrook, uh, or it was done under Acrebrook, Adair Place has now got eight homes, uh, four of which are occupied, and one is about to be occupied shortly, um, and the other's in mid-construction, and there's two more, one already digging, and the other one is, there are eight lots total that are gone out of the tent, okay? Um, we just need some clarification on a couple of things. One is that there was a requirement that says one street light will be required at the intersection of Lawrence Plain Road. At the corner, about 15, 18 feet from the corner is an existing pole. And I would like to know if it's okay to use that for the light uh, for that corner, or do you require a new pole to be put up that close to the other one? Um, the electric company said they would put that in. There's no issue there. They put it in actually for free, the, the light. Um, they charge just a monthly electric charge so you have a that plan or a photo question. that that would show it i you know the the lights themselves extend out and if i can get them at least to extend it in the direction of the corner as opposed to out over route 47 i think it will provide more than enough light at the corner okay. um but i i was hoping for some guidance here yeah you know, i live right nearby there when he for here was mr benjamin is saying the poll is should be fine. Okay. So is that okay? Do I need a vote? And, and then my other question is, 
Um, the uh, under supplementary conditions, it says the developer shall consult with the tree warden and plant new trees uh, in the tree belt designated by the tree warden prior to the acceptance of the roadway by the town. Um, we had met originally, with, and I can't remember the gentleman's name back when we first bought the property, uh, which was been the, when the crash happened, which is what delayed us for the first seven years of this project. Um, and he had basically said, plant, you know, put two trees on each lot and, you know, you can put whatever you want there. Um, of course, he's long gone, and, and um, uh, Scott McCarthy, I believe, is the new um, tree warden. And when I talked to him, he was concerned that trees uh, out by the street, you know, were going to get into, you know, roots were going to tear the street up like he's experiencing in other parts of town. Um, and uh, also on one side, we do have some underground utility uh, uh, conduits. Uh, so my question is, if we planted them just on the edge, but on the private property, is that acceptable? If I put two trees of native, you know, uh, we I, I think we ought to do a mix of trees. So in case, you know, in five or 10 or 20 or 30 years, some type of new new uh, tree uh, borer or something or disease comes through, you don't lose all the trees on the street um, if you have a nice mixture of trees. But um, so, you know, maples, maybe some cherries, oak, what have you, but we'll we'll go with native trees. My question is, is that okay if we put them on the uh, lot side, a little bit in from the street so that the roots are far enough away from the street that they shouldn't interfere at any time and, and cause, you know, damage? That seems... I don't, nice. I don't see a problem. I think I think it's probably a good idea to put them on. That's better. Yeah. yeah. Away from and, the street. and that way the leaves won't fall on the street as well. I mean, you know, when you go around town, some of the, you know, like the... Uh, uh, we live off of Middle Street and, you know, the trees are right on that sidewalk and it's, you know, the it, the sidewalk's destroyed, you know. Um, okay, so the, what, uh, we'll go ahead and, and do that. We're going to not plant them till September because obviously August is a bad month to put trees in. Um, and I'll, I'll let Scott know the size and height of the trees and get him to uh, sign off on that. And those were my two big questions. Um, okay. We had a list of things that we needed to do to make the street acceptable for endorsement. We we did the valve out front. We the fire hydrant is is correctly oriented. Um, I did the. Um, I, I'm having a guy come by one more time. Uh, we did the cracks. Of course, we do them every year. There doesn't seem to be much d uh, damage from over the winter uh, to, for crack repair. But I'm going to have my when he comes over to do my property here uh, in August. He'll do the do the street over if it needs any. You know, he'll go up and down and, and hit those. And then I have a contract already in place to do the um, uh, drainways to clean them out. And also a couple of them when Scott inspected them had uh, some needed some pointing. And we'll get all that done and signed off. Uh, early August is my plan. Um, and then we would like to get on the fall town meeting uh, warrant for adoption of the street. Um, and so the question is, at that point, we can come back to you in sometime in August after we get the major pieces done, possibly not the trees planted, but I'll you know sign an affidavit if you need that or uh, you're holding one of the lots anyway. Um, and, um, then we can, um, if, I'm hopeful that you would then endorse the, uh, town meeting to take the street. So the select board is opening the special town meeting warrant tomorrow night. Okay. I don't know when they are going to close it. Yeah. I think the sixth of the, uh, we, uh, I was at a uh, meeting last night and I forget what the date was, but I think it was like the, uh, August 6th. So, okay. so you won't get have. My you won't have much more information by then. So, yeah. um, uh, I guess, should we make a motion to put this on the town meeting warrant for acceptance subject to work being completed? Does he, does he have all his ducks lined up, the as -built plan and uh, acceptance from the DPW? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I, I believe he got all that from Scott. Yeah. Yeah, the only the only thing Scott was waiting on was uh he said we should instead of doing the uh drains, the storm sewers back in the winter, I said, why don't I wait till the summer? Because that way if there's any, you know, anything that's uh, accumulated before then, they'll be clean and perfectly done right at the time of acceptance, so that you know uh they it's it's recent you know, as opposed to seven or eight months ago. And he agreed to that. 
Um, and I did, I did get a contract with uh, Mohawk's going to do the work for us. Have we released all the lots? Uh, no, we hold one. We're you're holding on. one. Okay. Which I would love to have released, but we'll uh, hopefully after you do the acceptance, we can get that done later this summer, I hope. Yes. Okay. So is there one lot left to be sold? No, there's two. There, the, the two that are past the hammerhead, there's one on the right that's about a little over an acre, and there's one on the left that is about 15 or 16 acres. I mean, the other, the other thing that I would love to have consideration of is that the lot on the right um, is one acre, but it includes the, you know, there's the hammerhead and then there's the um, kind of circle that gives you the frontage, the, you know, for a cul-de-sac. And that means that you can't build within that and the right of way beyond that. But that's sort of, I mean, in a sense, it's a, it's a, a, a technique used to get that last, those last lots um, have the frontage that they need. And the question is, since we're already locked, that that is a lot, is it possible that the house could be shifted forward and make use of that space as part of the building envelope? Or is that a zoning issue? What's, what's the, I, uh, we'd have to see the plan for better discussion of that. Okay, I, I'll, I'll come in at another time for that. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And see if that's something you would agree to. Okay. Okay. Um, doesn't have to be done tonight. I really just needed the clarifications on this tonight so I can get things done and get the uh, um, all the survey information in, in for the town meeting. All right. Thank you very much for your time. So it's still, I still have the question about what is the process for asking it to be get, to getting on the warrant for acceptance? Do we ask, do we propose it? Or do uh, select board need to propose it? The typically the applicant requests that of the board of selectmen, and the planning board and the DPW are that's right. Get their input as to do they meet all the requirements, rather requirements than satisfied. Okay. So okay. I'll get my attorney to. Um, Paul, I suggest you get in touch with the select board office you won't make tomorrow night's warrant but i think they are having another meeting in uh in okay. july okay all right i will get on that right away and thank you so much for your help and advice paul we're on we're meeting july 24th okay thank you molly okay uh thank that you. brings us to ryan little Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, how's, our, how's everyone doing? Good. Uh, I am here representing Dave's Hot Chicken at 5 South Maple Street in, uh, in Hadley. Share my screen. So uh, uh, just a quick little recap. The last couple of meetings we went over uh, squaring up the building, you know, making sure we are under 64 square feet of actual signage um, on another rendering I can show briefly just for another recap <clears throat> or an elevation rather is the Greek guy uh, that we talked about. And then last but not least, um, and hence why I'm back on, you know, this week's meeting is the uh, last pylon sign. Uh, that we needed for approval, which was uh, the comments were nothing to be internally lit, uh, which we are presenting here. Uh, this right now has no clock below uh, on the existing side, and we are not going to be internally lighting it. Uh, we're still wrestling on how to illuminate it um, versus if we want just a um, single pendant directional light from uh, the ground or maybe even attaching a uplit light somewhere <clears throat> near where the, to the left of the time clock uh, that won't be uh, functional. So, but right now we just want to present a non-illuminated sign as we figure out how to externally light it. I think I would. Well, you, you presented about halfway there. The critical part is the illumination. So, uh, if you wanted to do it, and I guess with your blessing, is if probably to eliminate, <clears throat> so light it up from the ground. 
light it uh, up on the ground or a goose neck, and you have to show the rendering where it's going to be and how much light there will be. Will it show on the street? It's, uh, will it reflect onto the street? I would prefer down lighting. The ghost to, neck down, you're right, Mark. To minimize sky light pollution. Ryan, this is one of the things I know, we, you know a lot of people have been saying we've been overly critical of, of signage. But from the planning board perspective, we, we wanted to make some different rules and regulations. We brought it to a town meeting several, several years ago. And the town overwhelmingly do not want more signs, bigger signs, and internally illuminated signs. So we're merely following the wishes of the, the town meeting and the town's people. So uh, we're not trying to give you a hard time. We're just trying to apply the rules fairly. You froze, Ryan. Speechless. Uh oh. Okay. Well, if he comes back, we'll <laughs> take we'll get back to him. Okay. Um. So, uh, looks like Deborah was the in. next one in. Are you here to for with a specific question for us, or just to see the show? Is that Deborah? Deborah Levinson? I think Why Deborah's you? here as part of the smart growth. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, Ryan's back. And you're you muted, Ryan. No, you sorry about that. My uh, computer died, but I got it back to life real quick. Yeah. Did you hear what Dr. Zagradnik said about the signage? I heard uh, what preferred is gooseneck downlight, which we will do if that's definitely what uh, okay. the... Um... Why don't you tell him again what you said about try, not trying to be rough to him, Joe? Yeah, well, the fact is uh, the planning board several years ago had some change in rules and regulations and asking for a little larger signs for buildings that were set back from the highway and the town overwhelmingly voted it down. So uh, the town spoke to us at the town meeting and we're under obligations to follow the wishes of the town. So we're not trying to pick on you, Ryan. We just have to follow what is put forward. Yeah, no, I absolutely get it. And and we're we're willing to honestly do whatever the town allows us to do. Okay. Okay. So so quite so a lot is... of sign, you know, probably gooseneck lighting for a couple of reasons. It looks a little better than a ground up, but also less overhead light pollution to the sky. So, you know, it, it's it's you know, something like that would be great. Okay. We we we'll move forward with that direction then. Okay. Um, did you guys want to recap any of the, the other signage while we we're here? Sure. Sure. Yep. So just back to uh, <clears throat> the main um, Dave's Hot Chicken uh, linear sign. Uh, this will be uh, backlit um, with red illumination. You can see down here. And then si similar to probably what we'll do now with the pylon is – a non-illuminated chicken head signage uh, with goosenecks above. And now we, we chose the pylon sign closest to, because there were two pylons. Uh, this is the one closest to uh, the main road, um, non-illuminated, and we will add uh, goosenecks to this as well. I'm probably be two, I'm assuming, um, on okay. either side. So you're going to keep the one pylon sign along North Maple Street or South Maple Street, correct? Correct. And the one inside will be gone. Correct. Okay, and can we go back the to the directional signage, I think. The, no, the uh, the building sign. Okay. That is how big is that? That sign is thirty square feet. Okay. Oh, that dimension is one. Okay. Not, not I, okay. And then the, ch okay. the chicken head is 33.78 square feet. Excellent. That should go right through. Okay. And, and the 
chicken will not be eliminated, but the other one will. Uh, correct. <laughs> got a halo back backlit halo. Uh, yes, uh, sir. I think he's got goosenecks on the chicken head. He did. Yep, we got. We're showing four goose. Oh, you are showing ghost goose goose. Yeah. Okay, you are. That is illuminated, but but it's got the uh, goose deck lighting. Okay. Yeah, and just not internally illuminated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then yeah, same thing. Uh, backlit, halo lit, uh, linear. Dave's hot sign on the side of the building. Okay. And the Greek door. Yeah, the, the, the white Dave's is opaque, not clear, right? Correct. It is white. Okay. So the light won't shine through it. Nope. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, questions for the board? Entertain a motion. Uh, one question. Uh, do you, does this set of drawings have the uh, the uh, rendering of the structure as well. Uh, no, let me uh, stop sharing real quick and get that. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, that would, we'd like to see a building section to verify the roof height. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna keep the roof height at the existing 24 feet. Oh, that's not it. Okay. Okay. And this will show, this is uh, our elevations that we'll, we're going to start designing off of. So you don't have a building cross section yet? Uh, no, not, not as of yet. I think that's what you were looking for, um, Bill, right? Right. When you said it's what you're designing off of, uh, we've kind of like to see what we're going to get. Next like a, I kind of like an isometric 3D picture. Yeah, so how how is this going to differ from what you were actually going to do? How high will the parapet be above the roof? Uh, so we're, we are going to have the smallest parapet as we can. It might just be a couple inches or so. Because uh, we want to keep the roof line as high as possible. Go back to that rendering. Sorry. <clears throat> you know, we're not looking for construction blueprints, but we are looking for a realistic interpretation of what is going to go there. So when you say this is what you're going to work off of, that makes me worry a little bit. I mean, it's... It is what it is as a building. I can't say it's all that attractive, but it is what it is. So that's fine if that's what you're what you're going to build. But I don't want to see something else show up than what you have already shown us. No, absolutely, and we're not. I do actually. I believe uh, the architect. Give me one second. Uh, they had a little more formal elevations for us. One, sorry. <laughs> uh, so I, I do know the architect did provide uh some more detailed elevations i can dig them up but th those elevations were sent to the design team and the design team were the ones who altered that last um elevation that i just shared with the greek guy <clears throat> on the side
So yeah. I, I guess, Mike, back to that, the question is what else? We'd like to see a rendering of what will the building look like. Say from uh, probably from Russell's from uh, South Maple Street. So more of a angled rendering, I guess. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we I do not have those. I don't know if they could <clears throat> provide us a almost um, Revit type model. Since it's an existing structure, I'm, I could live without a 3D rendering, but I would like to see at least an architect's, um, I don't know what the, the exact word is, the perspective? Perspective, Mark, perspective drawing of the building. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just, I don't know why. I, uh, let's just get this back up real quick. So, sorry, I'm a, more of a Teams guy than Zoom. <laughs> sorry. All right. Can uh, everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. All right, so everyone can see my screen. So you, you, uh, a more architectural representation of this elevation. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, so a, a elevation with you know a little more detail to it. And you'll you'll note that the rope light is going to be in a cove. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll um, relay all this information back to the design team and see if we, I, I guess the best way to put it is <clears throat> we we need to tighten it up, make it a little more presentable. Yeah. We're, uh, you, you're you eventually going to go to the, we'd like to see basically, again, we don't need construction blueprints, but we'd like to see We'd like to be able to tell the building inspector when you file for your building permit that we have seen what you are proposing to build and it's acceptable. Yep. Um, so we have to get to the point that your your design team has finished its work and has settled on a design and the architect has at least rendered the outside of it. We don't care how you lay out inside, but we want to know is what's it what's it going to look like? Okay. Yeah. No. Let me uh, let me go back to the design team, and then um, we will uh, re represent on the the next town hearing, next okay. meeting. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good news is you've got everything that's required. You just got to put it together in a better package. That's also it's it's a little more refined. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So yep. I mean everything that you've you've got so far meets zoning and we're good with it. Just assemble it. Okay. And uh, when is the next town hearing again? August. No. Yes. August. August. August six. Uh, okay. August six. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, bye. Are we all set with his site plan as well? We'll 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 talk. We'll resolve everything on August sixth, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, put the plug into my architects about a site plan as well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next up would be okay. I think everyone else is here for the rest of the show, so uh, probably we could move on to the uh, opening the meeting of the trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. 
Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we need a motion to open the meeting or if we can just go ahead and um, declare the meeting open. Uh, I want to say what trustees are here. Yep, I'm just about to do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Molly Keegan, um, I'm the select board representative. Um, here with Jim Maximoski, Bill Dwyer, Mark Dunn, Mike Sarzinski, and Joe Zagrodnik. And I will call the meeting officially to order at 710. All right. Okay. Oh, hope I have the agenda up in front of me here. I'll tell you what, I'll, why don't I just pop the agenda on the screen so people don't have to go scrambling for it. I'll just leave it up for a moment. And... Okay. Not seeing it there, so let me... So it looks like the first item on the agenda is to review the uh, 40R Smart Zoning grant progress, discuss the impact of any of the Hampshire Mall foreclosure, review the UMass LARP studio exercise regarding the Hampshire Mall property. You want me to lead off with the 40R uh, Smart Growth? Thing. Can I also introduce uh, Kyle Dinal to from PBPC to co-present that'd be great mark thank you okay is kyle on the is he still here i'm here okay mm -hmm. great so we've met uh what would you say kyle maybe half a dozen times i believe at this point yes six okay uh we have a committee of i believe it's six people yes um we have gone over land use issues, uh, the goals of the study, and we have started, uh, or actually we're, we're almost done with the uh, survey for our first public engagement. And uh, Kyle has put together a, uh, Kyle and Deborah have put together a uh, introduction to that. Uh, actually, Kyle's put together what will go in the, is it the water? mailing yes we've uh, created a an announcement that will go out into the august water bill for property owners and that will have a qr code and also have the actual um url typed out for anyone to then go to the uh, online survey which has kind of have a half a dozen questions i think i believe it's up to eight now eight now okay um trying to get some feedback so mark have have you kind of made a parameter of what property you will be talking about so far i think we're focusing on route nine from the bike path tunnel east so we're staying out of the village center or between the village center and the connecticut river but uh, we're, we've been assuming a focus on Route 9. So, so from entire, that entire area would be 40R? No, that's the area we're looking at and we're, oh, okay. and we're asking, oh. asking for feedback. Okay. Kyle, Kyle specifically said last night that you can't spot pick for 40R. Okay, so you, you couldn't pick three buildings. You probably couldn't even pick Hampshire Mall. It has to be, as far as I could tell last night, a major part of Route 9. I don't know. And, I don't know that we got to, into... We've been asking that question for several months, and it's still not resolved then. Well, I, I think here, if the minutes were with, of last night's meeting will reflect that you cannot spot pick, and it has to be a large part. And if you don't tell the state what they want, you're not going to get anything, okay? I think, Mike, my take on it was that we can't pick one or two parcels, but we might be able to pick a section of that. I don't think we have to do the whole thing. That was not my uh, impression. That's what they would like, and they've expressed themselves. 
but I was hoping we could find something in between that, maybe a few preferred areas, one or two. And then we would discuss this with PVPC and see if we can float that by the state. But that's that's my impression. We haven't really gotten down to pinning down geographic. Um, could you comment on that, Kyle, please? Didn't you say last night that we couldn't pick two or three properties? <laughs> yes. So in conversation with the uh, planners in the Executive Office of Housing Livable Communities that review 40R applications, they stated that they discourage and uh, rarely uh, approve 40R districts that are single parcels. So they're looking for um, areas of concentrated development um, that typically are already zoned for a mixture of commercial and residential. Um, that total area is limited to like, I think upwards of 20 to 25% of the total area of the uh, municipality. Of course, that's not what we're interested in. Um, so we, in building the survey and trying to get initial input from the community as to what they would look for and um, a smart growth zone or district. Um, we're focusing on the areas along Route 9 from the bike pass underpass, the bike path underpass eastward to the Amherst Town line based on um, feedback from the housing production plan. So it was a similar kind of delineation from that survey um, where we got more feedback into you know what was uh, of interest from the community. So this is only the first step in what the steering community committee has requested of a three-step um, approach to engaging with the community. Um, so right now, the survey doesn't really get into the specifics of location. It more gets into the amenities and kind of the built form and features of smart growth. It really is introductory to concepts and elements of a smart growth district, which would be different housing type hawk. Uh, typologies. So what we would call missing middle, um, you know, row houses, condos, um, some apartment buildings of certain sizes, uh, duplex, triplex, uh, stacked flats. Uh, even we could explore cottages or smaller uh, type um, development. Um, and then the second approach that the steering committee is interested in in moving forward and engaging the community is a series of focus groups. They've identified, I believe, six stakeholder groups that they'd like to invite to have conversations with them to get more specifics. And I believe it's in that phase where we're start to get more uh, precise understanding of where this type of zoning would be preferred. And then the third leg of this strategy would be our community-wide um, meeting. We haven't discussed what the preferred format for that is as of the, uh, this point. Uh, we have some options. Uh, and that's where we'll start to kind of bring it all together and invite a broader uh, input from uh, residents. Kyle's doing an exceptional job, I think, as to uh, le leading this group. But he's also told us that you don't have any option, but going through the ritual, the ritual of uh, having these stakeholder meetings and public education and blah, blah, blah. It's not something you can say, no, we don't want to do. It's costly. And the same people show up and it's really pointless. But we have to do it because when the state says jump, our response apparently is going to be how high. Well, well, Mike, this. Um this way, I thought this was a suggestion. It appears we are not leading as a planning board. We're being led as a planning board. For right. example, do we realize that part of that area is zone industrial and that housing is not going to be allowed? What is the capacity of the SOAR if a lot of housing is going in? What will this do to the business district? When you put housing, as much as that term smart ghosts are thrown around, Kyle, there was a 
three or four story apartment building that went up on the Amherst town line. And the neighbors who lived in the backyard uh, there in a big housing complex located in Hadley strenuously objected to it. So the complex did not get built. It, in fact, it, they had to knock down two stories because the people objected. The minute you put housing close to businesses in a significant number, they will scuttle businesses. So ultimately the building that went up is only two stories. So uh, the smart growth concepts, the terminology sounds wonderful, but nevertheless, if you look at the whole area, put apartments in there, I think it would scuttle our business opportunity district. If I could interrupt, or are you done? Yep. Joe? I'd, I'd like to say two things. One, going back to uh, Mike made a good point that so some people might misinterpret. I What I heard last night was that we cannot pick just a couple parcels. And I think that's common sense. And uh, Kyle can correct me, but I think that's common sense legal ethics because we could say, oh, we're only going to allow development on Joe's property and Mike's property, and then we're showing favoritism. So we have to have some very, you know, some variety. And I hear your concerns, but that's kind of like telling us what nails we can use when we haven't even shaped the building yet. Those are things that we want that input later on and say, well, you can't do this there, you can't do that. And those all, those are all valid concerns, but I don't want to shut this down. And and my expectation is that we weren't coming in with a set. This is where we're going to put this, if any, um, affordable ODR or whatever we we decide makes the most sense based on public input. We're trying to explore all options right now. And I hear your concerns, but we're not, you know, I don't, just like you, I don't want to open up a whole flood zone of, of uh, not, that's not the word I, I mean, but I don't want to open the floodgates and have, you know, 18 apartment buildings. No, that's obviously, I don't think any of us want that, but we're just in the process of exploring where we could go without coming in with a prescribed expectation and inviting, like you just had, uh, public input. One of the reasons I wanted to go through this exercise and one of the reasons I wrote the grant application the way I did is that we've been talking about 40R at this, what, 60,000 foot level. And um, I, understand the concepts of it inside and out, but what I don't understand is what a bylaw is going to look like. Right. And that's what I hoped we were going to see out of all of this. It's it's a long which, time in the future to get that bylaw. Which segues <laughs> into a related problem that uh, Kyle has identified that the grant funding that we obtained through the district local technical assistance might not be able to stretch far enough to get us beyond the focus groups and survey to the point of actually drafting a bylaw that we could actually look at. So uh, Kyle has identified other funding sources other grant funding sources. Um, and I know, uh, Kyle, you said that the grant wants support from the planning board and the select board. Um, would it also be helpful to have support from, from this board, the trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund? I believe a letter of endorsement uh, for the grant would be uh, supportive. Um, so who will actually apply for the grant? So 
the proposal is uh, will be drafted by me, uh, but it, it'll be submitted by the town administrator. Um, more likely to be positively received from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Um, if we want to get into that topic, we can jump right in, but I, um, I don't know if we want to kind of backtrack and just clarify some of the points that were I'm brought just, up. I'm just wondering whether or not we should just pull the plug on this whole thing. Well, I, I would after you, make your, after you make these glowing statements, now you want to pull the plug. But nevertheless, there's one other comment I would like to make. Uh, yes, Hampshire Mall has declared bankruptcy. I've heard from a fairly reliable source that a the banks have hired a new uh, a new group to run the mall. This group is uh, much bigger than the pyramid group, and they have a tremendous amount of clout. So we're almost interfering with a private enterprise that's going to perhaps revitalize the mall in some way, shape, or form. And, and now everybody's saying, well, that's going to be apartments. I saw that rendering of apartments in the Hampshire Mall when I was going to the Apple store, when I was getting one of my first computers, that was 10, 12 years ago. And that was done by the University of Massachusetts students. And then there was another one four years ago, and then there was one last year. So it appears that the University of Massachusetts is recycling this, uh, this problem to the students every few years that it would be a wonderful place for apartments. So, uh, so, so I, I'm going to, just, just to keep this on track, I, I'm going to make a motion uh, that the Affordable Housing Trust Fund support an application for further grant funding to pursue 4DR. I okay. would second the motion. motion. Okay, say motion made by Bill and Mark. Did you just second that? I did. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion on yes. the motion on the table? Yes. What is okay. this? What is this application about? This is to what get. Is, a what is the cost to the town? I mean, I read a little bit about it, but I'm kind of confused because it was 50,000 mentioned, 30,000 mentioned. I think those are maximums. I think we have to match. So we would have to see how much we could leverage so, so to put on the table. And I'll let, I'll let Kyle speak to that. Yes. Yeah, so in the initial email, I um, gave you the, the maximum award possible would be 50,000 uh, for this round of, and for, this grant funding, uh, there is a requirement of a 25% match from the town. The budget provided by the direct local technical assistance grant is eligible and qualifies for matching funds. And I believe that um, in order to cover the um, required uh, to, to cover the in, agreed upon scope under the DLTA uh, grant, we really would um, only request 20,000 from this funding source. So we, so we could leverage the entirety of the DLTA budget as match from. Um, and as 25%, that you could go up to 22,500 to right. get a total of 30,000. Yeah. So it would really, um, it would allow us a comfortable amount of money to work on bylaw language. It would, um, it would essentially be three tasks. Uh, grant administration, we'd put a, a little bit of the budget aside just so that because there is quarterly reporting required and a final report at the uh, conclusion of the project. Uh, we would put aside a, a, uh, another section of the budget for concluding engagement and synthesizing community input. Um, and then we would put a, a bulk of that budget request, uh, 10,000 um, at least, to actually drafting bylaw language. Uh, because as uh, refer, uh, referenced by Mr. Dwyer in the original request, uh, for DLTA funding, there is the ask for an actual uh, a proposal that the planning board could get behind. 
to advance to annual town meeting. So it's really to close that gap and give us funding so that we can sit down, write bylaw language that could be simple revisions. It could be the full 40R application, uh, which requires uh, a line by line revision of a model bylaw. Uh, it has been, that model bylaw has been provided to the steering committee as an appendix to a land use survey and bylaw uh, review. Um, so the the the, fund, the request would be for twenty thousand dollars from the Commonwealth through the planning assistance grant. Um, I, uh, on behalf of the town, would draft the application. Uh, we would appreciate the endorsement, letters of endorsement from the Affordable Housing Trust, the Planning Board, and the Select Board. There would be a letter of endorsement from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, since we are technically providing the matching funds. Um, and, and then that would be submitted from the town, from town administrator. So what what's the town obligation? If, we move, if we move forward with a $20,000 request, there's no obligation it's, uh, it's, uh, other it's than reporting. Yeah. yeah. So it's so Joe, it, it's no money out of our pocket. It's leveraging the grant we already got from PDPC to get a larger grant. And I just want to add here, and again, Kyle, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it became clear to me over the last cu couple of meetings. And I think early on we talked about we're going to do this, we'll be done at the end of, of the calendar year, and then we'll have something to present at the spring. If we have anything, we could present it at the Springtown meeting, the annual town meeting. I'm not feeling like that's really likely to happen. I think this will take more thought and more development. Maybe by that time, we have it to the point where we need to start developing. You know, If we find an area and what approach we want to take, then we need to write zoning ordinance, which might be another DLTA. I, you know. What what's the time frame that this this process that you're proposing, Kyle, has to be completed? So the application for the grant needs to be submitted uh, pretty uh, urgently next Monday at four p.m. Submissions are due. Um, in terms of the funding, it is required to be spent by the end of fiscal year twenty six. So we could stretch the money. Um, we have, we have if quite a bit to, of time. If we wanted to stretch it that long, we we could. Yes, I, I don't think stretching it. I think you're not <laughs> you know, or, realistic. Or, right or yeah, yeah. So Kyle, the proposal. Some of the basic questions that I ask is: Do we have sewer capacity if we're going to put apartments in that area from the from the bike path tunnel? To the Amherst line. That's in the questionnaire. <laughs> it's so, so we, how should we know in the questionnaire? You've got to ask. I know, I know, I know. Well, they want they want to know if you want to have parades too or if, farmers markets. <laughs> you know, just if I could just put this in perspective, first of all, creating a 40 R district is not obligating the community to build a blessed thing. We are merely creating an environment that can be uh, moved into by developers who are willing to do it. If the developer cannot get a sewer connection, they're not going to build a blessed thing. Well, on the other hand, if, however, the state can make us put get us additional sewer connection to obligate these people, which the state can overrule. Uh, it's state not can't a overrule. suggestion. It is a <laughs> mandated situation. So I just want to keep us on track from an open meeting law perspective. I think we're starting to really drift off topic into speculation about other areas. Um, so again, there's a... Oh, I mean, Molly, this was mentioned from the uh, tunnel all the way to the Amherst line. It's as, not... As a Joe, what I heard is that that's the area under consideration. It's not the recommended um, district, right? This is just an right. area to look at so that we can determine 
based on feedback, um, surveys, et cetera, what might work best for the town of Hadley. So I think the only order of business on the table right now is um, a motion made and seconded to pursue this grant. It's time sensitive. Again, I think as um, Mark has articulated and, and Bill as well, it's not obligating us to do anything. It's not costing the town anything additional out of pocket right now. It's merely to keep the process moving forward so we can continue to gather data. Um, so just sticking with the grant topic, because we're gonna continue with the discussion of the Hampshire Mall shortly. Um, is there any further thought relative to the grant? I was just going to say that there are no assumptions at this point. Part of the survey is asking the the town citizens, what would you prefer? You know, it, would you prefer infill, duplexes, triplexes? Would you prefer, you know, what's, what scale? We're, we're just trying to get a sense of that. And if they say we don't want apartment buildings, we want to see smaller infill, then we might be looking at a different area if the town says, look in this area. We're just, you know, Joe, there's nothing set in concrete and there's nothing, as I understand it, that it's going to be shoved down our throat. Right? I don't have the years of experience that you do, Joe, so. So roll call. So say motion made and seconded. Um, so at this point, we'll move to a roll call vote. Um, Bill? Dwyer, yes. Joe? Uh, Joe, abstain. Okay, Jim? Jim, yes. Mark? Mark Dunn, yes. Mike? No. Okay, and um, I will vote yes. So we have a vote of four in favor, one against, and one abstention. Okay. Thank you. And that's, um, and due, that's due Monday at four. Is that what you said? Um, it, that's when the submission is due. Yeah. Um, if the letter can arrive to to my email inbox um, before then, all the better. Um, uh, I will be sending the the complete submission packet to Carolyn uh, for her to send off to um, the. Um, contact the program administrator at EEA. We okay. didn't mention the, the housing economic development. Is that one that that support letter is a possibility as well? Um, we're meeting on Thursday night. Um, it's not on the posted agenda, although the, okay. you know, an update relative to this is, but, um, but select board's meeting tomorrow night, we'll certainly be able to take a vote there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is um, a discussion about the Hampshire Mall property. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is just um, provide what what little update I can. Um, Carolyn Brennan and I, I believe, about two weeks ago, maybe two two and a half weeks ago, uh, we were able to make contact with the new property manager, um, a gentleman named Ian. And he made it very clear that he is uh, temporarily assigned. Uh, we asked specifically if he, what he could share about the intentions of the new owners. Um, as Joe just pointed out, um, as we know, uh, Wells Fargo and Deutsche Bank um, have taken the property onto their books at this point. And he indicated that his marching orders at this point was basically to keep everything up and running business as usual. So uh, continue to maintain the property, collect the um, rents from the existing tenants. Um, so he said that, you know, his goal was to make sure that it was as seamless a transition as possible from Pyramid to his management company, um, working again on behalf of the new owners. Um, his expectation is that the uh, there will be somebody um, assigned from the management company of a more permanent nature. Um, and that likely would happen within the next few months at any rate. Um, the ask that Carolyn and I made was to stay as close as possible um, 
to the new owners and make sure that they knew that Hadley, the town itself, was a very interested party here, given the size and the and the um, uh, significance of that property to our uh, commercial district, and wanted the opportunity to make them aware of the fact that some of these smart growth discussions are taking place, whether or not it impacted, ultimately winds up impacting that parcel or not. Um, he said that he uh, was very grateful to have that information. As a matter of fact, they're the property managers for the Kingston um, collection. The other pyramid property that we heard about from Lynn Gray, if you remember a couple of years back, um, where they had started the process of um, removing a portion of the a portion of their uh, retail mall space and were building, in that case, I believe they were kind of high-end luxury apartments with some affordable component down there. So that project was already underway. So he said, we're intimately familiar with this concept. If in fact, um, zoning heads in that direction and he would make sure that the new owners uh, again, uh, maintain some sort of open line of communication with the town. So that's all I can tell you tonight. I'm not, a, I haven't heard any other information. So if anybody knows anything different from that um, tonight, please um, indicate so. Is this housing trust, Molly, or should we be in regular session now? Pardon? Is discussion about the Hampshire Mall housing trust stuff or not? It's on the agenda. It is yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's on the agenda tonight. Yeah, I'm okay. just, I'm just working through the agenda, Mike. Oh, Thank okay, you. got it. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you know, and obviously, I mean, the, the owners, um, they have deep pockets. You know, they must uh, – it's not clear that they necessarily have a particular uh, – agenda or anything in mind, I, I would just make, you know, a mental leap that um, maintaining the mall in, in perpetuity as it exists right now, I can't imagine that that's their long view um, and the reason for the purchase, but we you know we don't know that. So um, I just want to make sure that whether it's, you know, the planning board, housing and economic development committee, the select board, town administrator, that you know, we do everything we can to try to uh, keep some sort of communication going so that we don't wake up one day um, and there's some brand new project in front of this board that we didn't see coming. And, and I, I guess to that end, I've got a question for uh, the planning board. Um, so right now, given the current zoning, you know, where the mall is, what other types of with existing zoning, what other types of construction could occur there? The business they could, with that property, they could put in one dwelling, mm -hmm. one house, that's it. On the whole property, it's allowed one house. And they could, they could put in any kind of businesses they would want, reasonable, that, that falls within the description of the bylaw. You know, more mm -hmm. stores, more restaurants, uh, Gas station probably wouldn't be permitted because it's in most of it's in the aquifer. Mm -hmm. um, um, where warehouse, Jimmy, or yeah, Amazon warehouse. warehouse. It's not industrial. That okay. that property is only zoned business. Okay. Mountain okay. Farms is zoned industrial. It would support a residential real estate development as an alternative to the mall. Yeah, th that would be a subdivision. A sub yeah, you could do a subdivision. Um but you probably have to level them all to do that. And, and that would be difficult Look, because P P Target owns their own property. Right. And they have a very complex right of way for parking, et cetera. Um, I remember when that was proposed, I think uh, it was done with uh, Pete McConnell. I think he said the agreement for a group for Pyramid and Target his page is thick. So. Mm -hmm. a, uh, a hotel would be allowed in there, office yeah. buildings. Conference center. Yes. Yes, conference center. Mm -hmm. Hot chicken. Hot chicken. Yeah. <laughs> chicken coops. 
<laughs> Big farm. Mm -hmm. Orthodontist. Uh, with, you know, anything else that you see up and down Route 9 would pre pretty much be permitted there, with the exception of gas stations. And and, uh, and industrial use, as you pointed out. Correct. Okay. And under the current under the current zoning, it's one parcel, right. one dwelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like uh, Bill the, said, sub subdividing it is a possibility. A lot of the uh, a lot of the mall property is outside the aquifer, though. It it just clips the sort of the J.C. Penney side. Okay. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then you could put a gas station near the near closer to the target store area but that's about the limit of a of any kind of a um built you know, unit like that you know repair station gas station yep all right that's helpful i mean i, I think you know it's good for to remind people you know with in the absence of any change of zoning there are only a certain um well technically a finite number of uses for that property, but there's still opportunity for them, if the new owners, to kind of reimagine within the context of strictly commercial as well. Yeah. Okay. If they subdivided, they might have a parking issue, but they could always build a parking garage to get their density. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a parking garage would definitely be a possibility if it was cost feasible. Okay, is there anything else relative to the, the Hampshire Mall that anybody wants to talk about? Otherwise, the next uh, agenda item is an update on the University LARP project. Okay, all right. Um, so relative to that, um, what I wanted to report out on, um, because as you know, it was the Housing and Economic Development Committee um, that initiated this with the university. So what the university did was they utilized their uh, spring semester project. Um, and it was one of the first times they did a combined project for the primarily upperclassmen. I think there were some underclassmen involved, but primarily upperclassmen came together from both the landscape architecture um, and regional planning groups. Um, and they were assigned a, an exercise. And again, that's all it was. It was an exercise. This is something that they could have done on their own without approaching the town of Hadley. But we, you know, we're looking for ways to collaborate um, and have more engagement, positive engagement with the university. So uh, they spent the entire semester um, working through that. Uh, I think at about some point the uh, landscape folks kind of dropped out and then just left the the architectural group in place to do their design work so um, just uh first week of july uh, the head of the program got permission to send us uh, provide us with access to their google drive as you can imagine a lot of these design renderings are pretty uh significant in terms of, you know, it's not something you can attach to an email easily and share. Um, if you'd like to see an example of one of the drawings, I'm happy to do a screen share and pull one up for you, um, recognizing this is just one example of what, what the students did. So would that be of interest? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bill, will I be able to share? Yes. Okay. All right, let's see if I can. Uh, let me just stop sharing for a second and just see if I can. I can. Okay. I, I had mentioned it yesterday's meeting that I went to the last meeting, or I mean, the last presentation, I didn't go to the earlier ones. Mm -hmm. And they had different teams and different teams had different percentages of the existing mall that they would keep. So mm -hmm. as their parameters. 
if, okay. you, if you're really old school, uh, these are on the wall outside of Target. What used to be the entry to Best Buy and the um, no. uh, was it another chicken restaurant that was in there for a while? It was the Wings. Mm -hmm. Hot Wings is it? Yeah. Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo wings. hot wings. Yeah, it's in that little that little foyer out there, just outside the mall indoor mall entrance to uh, Target. Correct. Okay. And so, this is very similar to the one that I saw well, at the Holyoke Mall previous to that. So, yeah. this is uh, evidently an assignment that goes on every few years. It's like I don't think it's a unique project. So, um, so that's actually not true. Um, for just from the standpoint that this is something again that they had never done between both the landscape architecture and and the regional planning. Um, it was one that we gave them several options. Um, they wound up choosing the Hampshire Mall. We had asked them, you know, they could have done the. Hadley Town Center, uh, you know, coming over the bridge and, and what that might look like. So again, the idea behind it really was not to provide them with any constraints. Um, they fully understood that it's not zoned for what they would want it to be to make this happen. And, uh, you know, again, the idea was to conceptually develop plans so that people could you know, really start thinking about what the mall could look like. Um, so just the one in front of you right now, the groups were assigned different constraints. So in one case, uh, there was a subset that said that they had to uh, keep the mall fully intact. They had to preserve 100% of the mall. Another group, I think, was 75% and then a third, like 50%. So in the one that you're looking at, um, here they've kept... The majority of the mall, this would be Target over on the right-hand side as you're looking at it. Uh, the cinema theaters in the back here, they've carved off portions, you know, from Dick's and J.C. Penney's on. And then they wound up putting in some residential housing units. Um, these two bow-shaped structures would be housing. And then they had to figure out how much parking did they need? How could they add green space? You know, in some cases they had walking trails in the back here where it moves towards um, the wet areas. They knew that they had to preserve Trader Joe's, you know, the new chase site, et cetera. So, you know, each group came up with their own idea. Um, in some cases they built up, they had, you know, rooftop gardens, um, you know, all sorts of things. So again, it, it was intended to be an exercise and to engage with the students. Uh, so, Molly, do, you, do you remember yep. what the what the thinner buildings were? There's some thinner ones, top center and and lower left. Yeah, those, those dog leg shapes. Was that yeah. smaller housing? I can't remember. Yeah, they were different types of housing. Okay. Uh, yeah, and and the reason that they came up with that idea was they were leveraging off of our own master plan. So they understood the desire to preserve green space, uh, et cetera, but also the housing production plan indication that people were looking for more of that um, kind of middle stock housing. So, you know, again, uh, you know, are, are we likely to rush out and ask them to come in and, and build this? I mean, who knows what the, the, the economics of any of this would be, but, it was, um, you know, I think it was a, a fruitful endeavor with the university and the university obviously thought so too, because I found out yesterday that they're actually eager to look at doing uh, another project of this kind. Um, you know, again, whether they might pick the Hadley Town Center or something like that, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that, you know, some of the folks on, on the respective committees were able to get over there and, and see this. And knowing that not everybody has that opportunity, they have shared this Google Drive. Um, just today, I um, asked them to send it to the planning uh, email address. So Bill, you should be able to see that 
in your planning inbox? Yes, I did get that tonight. And I'll send it around to the rest of the board. Okay. Bill, may I be included in that? Oh, oh Kyle, sure. Yes. yes. And Thank Matt, you, you would much. probably like that too. I would. I would. Is it, is it fair to say we should not just share it willy nilly, but within those of us identified at tonight's meeting? I mean, it's there. I don't know. Molly, what's your sense? Do they. Um, feel I, I I think they're they're fine with us sharing it with stakeholders, but you're right. I mean, I don't think the, it, on the Google Drive, you know, you need to get an access code and everything in order to okay. to tap into that. So, um, but they've certainly been very public with it, you know, because that ran the article on it, and uh, I think the university appreciates the positive yeah. um, press on this. But you know, they're really looking at it as a way to to try to work cooperatively with the town. It's something that um, for a long time now, we've been talking to the university about ways to partner. Um, and it's just a shame. I mean, you've got that amount of talent sitting in our backyard um, and rarely do we ever tap into it. And, you know, it kind of goes both ways. They haven't necessarily reached out either. So I think this is um, something of interest. And another thought that, you know, um, we'll talk about at our committee meeting tomorrow for housing, um, housing and economic development is the possibility of utilizing, uh, I don't know if it's the regional planning team or economics or whom, but maybe partnering with the university to have data put around uh, the idea of adding to housing stock, adding to commercial property. W what is the actual dollar impact, right? It's not just property taxes, it's, you know, as we know, full well, a hotel's being filled, it's sales tax revenue. And we don't have anybody on staff that's able to do that work, um, nor do we have money lying around to hire somebody like Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to do that work when they're focused on 40R right now. So um, maybe there are ways for us to leverage um, those resources, so. So uh, Mark, to your point on distribution, as I said, they're posted, they're hung on the wall at the mall. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, I, I don't- I just thought it was worth asking. Yeah, I'm not gonna send it to everybody on my uh, <laughs> agenda mailing list, but at the same time, uh, yeah. um, I don't think it's considered proprietary. Okay, okay. Just, just a few uh, comments. Uh, many years ago when the uh, Mountain Farms Mall was known as the Dead Mall. There was a group from the University of Massachusetts came in and they wanted to make a mini research park for the University of Massachusetts students and some people who were going on to form their own businesses. And that's uh, a couple of them that started there. And this group, I don't know if Marcus, if it disappeared, but a research park in that area would would employ a lot of people. And uh, that would be a possibility. And the other thing too, the University of Massachusetts always tries to say they're gonna be a good neighbor. However, we are wrestling with a battery, battery storage facility problem. Did you know that the University of Massachusetts has a battery storage facility located in Hadley and they never did consult Hadley when they put it in. And it's a very, very large battery. Or at least it's not in the aquifer, right? That is correct, it's not in the aquifer. So there is a storm going on around there. Uh, I did hear from Hadley Media, they got knocked off the air and it looks like Joe just got knocked off the air. Looks like the only ones left are you, me and Kyle. Aye, aye, aye. And Mike. Yeah, it looks like Joe and Mark are knocked off and Molly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we got <laughs> we got good new fiber in the uh, East Street Commons. So, by the way, Jim, did you ever find out if the the uh, uh, site plan for East Street Commons included sidewalks? I think it did. I haven't had a chance to go look for it. Okay. 
Okay, so we I think cannot... people don't want them. That's that's what I've been told, and they want to see if we got to amend the site plan here. So I guess uh, I'm going to make a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting of the uh, at eight o'clock of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Second. Motion. Okay. <laughs> Molly's not on. The bill just got knocked off. Hey, Joe. Hello. Fun. Okay. Bill's yeah, back. Okay. I will act as the interim chairman. We have a motion and a second because the other members have been knocked off because of a storm. All in favor of the adjournment? Aye. Bill? Aye. Uh, Dwyer, aye. Maximoski, aye. Terzinski, aye. Motion passes with only three of us present. Um, Everybody got knocked off except for Jimmy and uh, Bill and Kyle. Yeah, and you. Zeke? I'm, I'm not. Joe just called me, but when he tried to go through the phone, the, phone, the call failed. I Joe? What? Did you call? You just called me. Joe yeah, just tried calling me on my cell phone. And when I, I picked him up, he was blank. I called you, you, you want to vote? You want to vote on the motion to uh, uh, end the uh, affording, affordable housing trust meeting? Can you hear? Tell him I can't vote. I don't know what's going on, though. Okay, we do, just we voted to adjourn because we lost three of you. Uh, so just vote to adjourn. Yeah, no, don't even. Okay. We're set. This is a first. Okay. This is a first. Make sure the notes reflect that he voted on my okay. Mike Starczynski's iPhone. <laughs> are, are you Are you going to pick me up then, Mike? Yeah, we'll pick you up. Okay, okay. So it's going to be a All while. Right. Okay, I, bye. I, I, I can't open the garage door. So. Oh, you lost your electricity. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. Um, well, that diversion. Okay. Back um, to the planning board. We, well, we never voted to we never voted to, to, to suspend it, so we're still an active planning board. Okay. So we're up to uh, item B, uh, PVPC. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I think the most urgent and um, pertinent uh, agenda item would be review and uh, acceptance of planning board assistance fiscal year 2025 contract and scope of services. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, for the, the same motion we made with the uh, Housing Trust Fund, right? Um, this well, would be... Yeah, yeah let's uh, let's adopt... Let, let's uh, accept yeah, the work program. We still going on because we've got a quorums. What was that, Bill? Let's... Uh, uh, so what Kyle's proposing is we accept the work program. And I can pull yeah. that up real quick. Adopted contract for FY25. Yeah, the meeting's oh, still going oh, yes. on because we've got a call. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Adopted the fiscal year 25 contract. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, I'll, I'll call you back. Bye. So the contract was provided, written uh, to be um, level with the uh, fiscal year 24 funding, uh, totaling uh, uh, not, not to exceed $10,000 and no cents. Um, in terms of the scope of services, um, in, I reinserted the planning board rules and regs since there's some uh, just fine revisions still outstanding, uh, as well as the town permitting guide. Uh, and then the zoning bylaw, um, I inserted 3B, inclusionary zoning bylaw review and update based on conversation we had, I believe back in May, uh, just speaking to the fact that that bylaw hasn't been thoroughly reviewed in uh, decades now. So um, that's really the bulk of it. Um, I believe you've had 
this for a little while, but I invite any conversation or questions. Okay. Looks pretty much like we've had in the last number of years, except yeah. for the amount of changing around a little bit. And obviously the, the scope of work changes accordingly. Yep. I did ask uh, Kyle and I copied uh, Jim on it, I think that, um, let's see, we have uh, like Mark trying to get back in on his phone. So let me put that in. Um, <clears throat> that uh, I, I've been carrying this uh, adopt standard conditions for special permits forever. Uh, but I'd like to just uh, move that along um, so that I don't have to read a four page motion. I could just read a one page motion and say that the extra the next six pages are our standard conditions, which can be found in the regulations. Right. Um, I did add that little caveat to uh, that first uh, piece. Okay. Um, and Bill, I'll um, connect with you uh, via email. I've, I haven't confirmed the latest version that is on yeah. my end. But yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any questions on the contract? Uh, I'm sorry, I got nothing. We lost power. What did I miss? <laughs> okay, we voted to adjourn the housing trust fund meeting. We're back in the planning board okay. meeting. Okay. And we are discussing the annual contract with PVPC. So Linda just came in and said that there is an emergency tornado alert. There is. It just came through from UMass as well. I just alerts I, worse than a watch, isn't it? Or is watch worse than an alert? Before I got disconnected, I was you, you might have seen me turning. I was watching our our deck furniture fly across the yard. Jesus. 8:30. So Mark, you're from the Midwest. Is is warning worse than an alert? Or vice versa. I think warning, no, watch, warning, and then alert. I don't know. Really? So alert's the worst. I thought. Well, we need more solar panels. And I'm not from the Midwest. <laughs> my... um, so there are three important things. Um, I'm not sure that, I think we can pass over adopting the FY25 contract and take that up in uh, at our next meeting, just because of what, what the hell is going on out there. Okay. Uh, um, I sent around the town council's response proposed Okay. Yes. I sent around town council's proposed response to the uh, uh, objection from zero point. Anybody uh, have any additional thoughts on that? Looks good. No, I thought you did a great I'll, job. But... I'll make a motion to uh, agree with the town council uh, comments. Second. Any comments? <laughs> if not, roll call vote. All in favor, aye. Mark Dunn, aye. Where aye. Sarzinski, aye. aye. Sorry, Mike Sarzy, aye. Yeah. You said that, Mike? Yes, aye. Okay. And Joe has been knocked off. So the motion passes 4 0 with one absent. Molly, uh, we adjourned. Perfect. Because. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I lost power. I'm sure Molly lost power too. Right. And we, and we have a tornado warning. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's in uh, apparently in Leverett, heading him up the hill to Shoots Ferry. So. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and the uh, oh the uh, LTA uh, grant. Yeah.
So I'll make a motion uh, to uh, support applying for the supplemental grant. That was the planning assistance grant, I believe it's called. Correct. Correct. I would second that. No motion a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Mark Dunn, aye. Dwyer, aye. Maximowski, aye. Tarzinski, aye. So Grodnick is absent, so the motion passes 4-0 with one absent. Thank you. Let him figure that vote out. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably should do a motion to adjourn, Mr. Dwyer. I will make a motion to adjourn. I would second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Vote. Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, everyone.